Amen. 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 We're going to turn this over to you. We're not going to hold it anymore. Congregation passes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I like what I'm feeling. Amen. I'm going to read one passage of Scripture from the Psalms this morning. Hallelujah. And I think it just fits right now. Amen. Psalms 137 and 4. Psalms 137 and 4. Come on. How shall we sing uh -huh. the Lord's song in a strange land? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to talk this morning about singing the Lord's song in a strange land. Yes. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful to you. We are so thankful Lord, for your presence that we feel right now. Lord, we want you to take complete control, Lord. We're taking the shackles off, Lord. We're letting the Spirit move with liberty. And we pray, God, that you will touch each and every heart that is here today. Meet every need, God. We know you're able to do it, Lord. We lift you up. We praise you, Lord. We seek your face. Our hearts are hungry for a move of God. Lord, you are God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We can be seated. Hallelujah. Daniel 1 and 1 reads, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Aspenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children, in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel. Come on. Daniel. Uh -huh. This scripture in the Psalms captures the heart of the people. Come on. When you read in Psalms 137 and 3, it says, For there, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Come on. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You see, Jews... When they greet each other and they're in exile, they will say this. Next year in Jerusalem. Amen. Next year we'll be in Jerusalem. Although they were not at home physically, they would turn their hearts mm -hmm. towards home. Come on. They had an affection, a place in their heart for their beloved Jerusalem. What is affection? Affection is tender attachment. Kind of like what we heard from Brother Gus this morning. Wasn't that tender attachment and affection? <laughs> Devotion. Fondness. Love. Passion. As we look at the life of Daniel, the Bible tells us that Daniel got to a place to where he would open his window 
towards Jerusalem and pray. And when Daniel opened his window towards Jerusalem and pray, I believe he was setting his gaze towards Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I believe he was making a statement at that point that I'm kind of homesick. Uh -huh. I'm kind of homesick. I am missing Jerusalem. You see, it's more than a city. It's the city of God. Yes. It is the place where the holies of holies stood. It is the place that was the home of the Ark of the Covenant and the presence of God dwelt among His people. It was the place where the smoke of the sacrifice ascended up to heaven from the brazen altar. It was the place that the incense had risen as a sweet-smelling aroma to their God. And never forget, it was the place where God's glory filled the house and was so powerful that people could not stand to minister. I believe that Daniel knew in his heart of hearts that I have an affection that is above anything else in this world and my heart, my soul, my desire, my devotion is to my God above everything else. I must turn my eyes and my heart towards the place of my God. They came to the king in Daniel 6 and they talked him into signing a law. He said, Whosoever shall petition, ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Verse 10 of Daniel 6 tells you a lot about him. It says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he knew that the writing was signed. He went into his house. And his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. He knew, but he did it anyway. He was saying, I am not ashamed of my God. I'm throwing open my windows and I don't care who knows, but I love the Lord above everything else. man who knew what it was like to stand for his God even if it meant being thrown into a den of lions. Come on. We see him interpreting visions, translating the writing on the wall, giving advice to the king himself. And through it all, through it all. he continued to sing the Lord's song yes. in a strange land. Strange. How about Bizarre, crazy, uh -huh. <coughs> outrageous, shocking, nah, nah, nah. unorthodox, bewildering. Come on. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Nah, nah, nah. Hebrews 11 and 13 says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off right. and were persuaded of them, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers. Mm -hmm. Come on. Woo. Verse 16 of Hebrews 11 says, But now they desire a better country. Yes. That is an heavenly Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared for them a city. Oh, I haven't been there yet, folks, but I'm feeling kind of homesick. 
Hallelujah. 
Daniel did not go along just to get along. That's right. We do not win the world by becoming the world. No. Amen. He said in Exodus 13 and 12, Thou shalt set apart unto the Lord. Oh, sometimes we just have to set some things apart for God. In 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 it says, And such were some of you, but ye are washed. Amen. Aren't you thankful for the Holy Ghost? Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Ye are sanctified. Hideazo. Sanctified. It means holy. It means set apart to God. Oh, we need to set our hearts apart to God. We need to say that my affections, my heart, my life, my desires are all focused upon God. Set your affection on things above. Yes. Yes. Jesus. Think of your inward life as a house. It says in Matthew 12 and 43, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house. Woo! Maybe you need to just tell the devil, this is not your house. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> you don't live here. This is not your house, devil. The light of the body is the eye. It says in Matthew 6 and 22. The light of the body is the eye. And what does the window do in your house? It allows the entrance of light. Mm -hmm. He said in Matthew 6 and 23, But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. We have to choose what we said. Before our eyes. Amen. Right? Amen. We have to choose what we set right outside of our window. What we're looking at. Amen. Amen. Some people set wickedness right in front of them. Mm -hmm. How about Lot? He pitched his tent toward Sodom. Every time he opened his tent flap, what do you think he was looking at? That's right. Sodom. That's right. He said it before his eyes. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. But the window can also be a source of hope. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. In Genesis 6 it says, A window shalt thou make to the ark. Mm -hmm. And it says in Genesis 8 and 6, And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window. Mm -hmm. He opened that window. The rain stopped. And the light of hope came into the ark. How about Rahab? It says in Joshua 2 and 8, Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. In verse 21 it says, And she did, and she said according unto your words, so be it, and she sent them away. But notice what happened next. And they departed, and she bound the scarlet line in the window. Mm -hmm. She didn't wait around for some more convenient time. She said, I'm putting that line in the window right now because that's my hope. Yeah. Every time that she would start to feel depressed or down or sad or think that God had forgotten her, she would look out the window and she would see that hope. And I believe that's what Daniel was doing. He stepped up to that window and he looked towards Jerusalem and he said, My God has not forgotten me. My God knows exactly where I'm at. My God knows what I need. How can we sing the Lord's song in the Can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Oh, we need to focus on the Spirit. Yes, yes. we need to allow the Spirit to get into our hearts and begin to direct 
our life. Kind of like John. He stuck on the island of Patmos. And you can believe he heard the crashing of the waves all day. And he felt all alone. And some people would say he was abandoned on that island. Oh, but I believe he was never alone. I believe God was right there with him. And he said, I was in the Spirit. Yes. On the Lord's day. I was in the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine where is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Oh, it's time to open your windows this morning. Mm -hmm. It's time to open your windows towards Jerusalem. It's time to open up the windows of your heart and let God begin to come in. Sometimes in the spring, after you've been shut up for a while, and the winter is feeling all musty, it's time to let the fresh air begin to blow through your soul again. Maybe it's time for a new awakening in God. Maybe it's time to let God move on your heart today and begin to rekindle the fire of the Holy Ghost. Maybe it's time to stir up the gift that is within you. Take your eyes off of this world. windows that have been closed for far too long. Maybe it's time to open up the window today. Oh, he has been there all the time. He's just waiting for you this morning to say, God, I need you. I need the Holy Ghost. I need the power of your spirit to move in my heart. Oh, it's time to stop looking at the world and all of the problems that are going on in it. It's time to stop feeling like a stranger in a strange land. But it's time to remember that God has not changed. Open up your heart today and begin to sing the Lord's song. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. It's time for somebody today. Oh, you've been hemmed up and trapped for so long in what you have been going through. Oh, it's time to open up the windows and turn your eyes towards Jerusalem. Stop looking at all that's going on in this world around you, but turn your heart towards God and say, I'm ready to come home. place to pray this morning. I think everybody could use a fresh touch from the Lord today. Oh, let the wind of God blow in your heart this morning. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. 